a good crowd. Um, I'm glad y'all came. Um, the stuff I'm going to talk to you today about will have no bearing on your day-to-day -day activities right now, but it will open up some benefits for you guys in the future. <clears throat> right now we're using an old, probably 10-year-old server for your student email. Um, in the day it was very state-of-the-art, very leading in technology. And to let you know, Southeastern Tech was the first technical college to provide students with school email addresses. All the other technical colleges were behind us in that. But with the other technical colleges behind us in that, their technology is a lot newer than ours. But anyway, um, I know some of you probably have seen the last, probably since last Thursday, some of your student email communication with your faculty was kind of non-existent. Probably got some bounces or some errors. We should have that flow back going now, so that should be fine. But to give you an idea of the old student email system we're currently working, it's Unix-based um, or Linux-based. It's all free to us. It costs us a dime. Uh, we implemented that, and it has basically been hands-off for 10 years. Um, the only thing we do to the old email system is we turn it on if the environment or something works, you shut it down. Um, every once in a while we would reboot it, but basically that server, once we installed it, got it configured, and got the automatic merging of your accounts happening every day, for 10 years we have not touched that server, so we can't, we can't complain too much about um, the server we had. But moving forward, um, the state has purchased an Office 365 agreement. How many has heard the term Office 365 or 0365? Many people think that's a version of Word, Excel, Access. It's not a version. It's just the name they gave the subscription. It probably would have been less confusing had we named it. It probably would have been less confusing if they had just named it Microsoft 365 instead of Office 365. Everybody thinks it's a version. How many in here is subscribing to Office 365? Anybody? Has anybody? Um, how much does it cost? 60 bucks a year or something like that? I More? Probably, probably for the whole year, like $200. Alright, so Office 365 is a, is a very expensive product for you to go buy yourself. If you bought Office 2016, <coughs> full-fledged installation disc, retail price for that, gets up into close to the $300 range. How many of you, and if you're taking your BAT programs, you're probably going to need access, so that gets you into the Office professional version. The home edition that they used to have or the academic edition they used to have did not have access in it. So to get that you got into the pro version which is close to $300. How many has $300 just to go drop at the bookstore to buy Office 2016 for your classes? Nobody. Um, I don't have it. So to help you guys with that we've had a thing called Citrix that allows us to push those applications to your desktop that you have to buy them at home or anywhere that you have web access. Citrix has worked very good for many years and it still works good today. The problem with Citrix today is not a problem with Citrix at all, it's a problem to where you land on Citrix. If you go to My STC and you click the Citrix button, it takes you directly into Citrix. You never see the login screen, so Citrix never has an opportunity to check your system to see if you have the right um, application or right plugins installed. Therefore, it doesn't work. So uh, many times I get from students, Citrus does not work. Well, it works if we get all the plugins that we need installed for that. But that's a different story on its own. So, but that's what we provided for students, so they wouldn't have to go out and spend three hundred dollars for the app application. The subscription base now basically, you pay for a subscription to Microsoft. Right now, the current version is Office 2016. So if you buy Office 365, you're buying a subscription just like a magazine subscription. If you buy a magazine subscription, what happens every month? You get the new edition, right? That's the same thing with 365. You're buying a subscription, so when the office updates, you get if you go, you don't get it automatically, but if you were to go to the web and say, I want to reinstall this application, you get the new version. It doesn't push that automatically. So that's what a subscription base does. If you buy the retail CD from the bookstore or from anywhere for Office 2016, that's what you've got when you go buy another version. But with the subscription based, you pay for the subscription, and as long as you pay that money every year, you can always get the latest version of Office on your machine. 
as an entity, as a state agency, we have always paid Microsoft for every Microsoft product you see. And we pay it at the state level. And so if you can imagine, it's a number with a bunch of zeros behind it, what it costs the state every year to pay for the Microsoft agreement. In the past, the Microsoft agreement we paid for gave us unlimited installs of the Office program on any machine that we buy. We could put any operating system that Microsoft offers on any machine that we buy, but under the rules that we had to have a version of Windows on it already. And so that was basically how we could do it. And we could offer Microsoft Office for our faculty and staff for like 10 bucks, as long as they were employed in Southeastern Tech. Did have anything for you guys like that? Wouldn't that be nice for you guys to have access to that for 10 bucks? How many will pay 10 bucks for Office 2016? You pay it? Well, if I told you you could get it for zero dollars, how many get jump in on that? Well, that's that's where we're moving to. We're with Office 365. The state looked at how much we was paying for our Microsoft license, and there's some other things that went in that we have that faculty staff that you guys don't see that we have bundled that we're paying for services for other things. We bundled all that together. Microsoft was able to offer us a better package doing the subscription based than doing what we used to do. As a school, we can still install any office we want that's available to us on our lab machines, office machines. We can still install the operating systems. But by moving to this 365 subscription-based plan, now you guys are going to be brought into the fold where you can get Office downloaded to your machine. But now it's free of cost. It used to cost the faculty and staff 10 to 15 bucks. Now they get it for free, and you get it for free as well. So what's going to happen as we move forward is first I've got to get you guys moved from the old email system to the new email system. Your email will be up in the cloud, in the office, or whatever cloud. Um, it will actually be an exchange account. Don't worry about what kind of account it is. Just know that you're going to get a Microsoft email address uh, account. Your email address will still be the same, third-party ID at students.southeasterntech.edu. And so we're moving the faculty and staff. We're starting the transition tomorrow. We'll do a few test accounts. I'll run a couple of weeks with those few test accounts. Then I'll move a few faculty staff over to the to the new instance of our email. Um, if all that runs, then I'll finish the faculty and staff, get them moved over. Then I'm gonna start working on you guys. But it's from my understanding, once we have enabled the Office 365 subscription for Southeastern Tech, you guys will be able to go to a link with your with your um, Amber Alert. Um, so you guys should be able to go to this link that I, we, will dis, we will distribute it out to you guys. Um, I don't know how we'll do that yet. Either we'll do it via email, email or maybe put a message on my STC. But you should be able to go there, register with your at students.southeastertech.eu email address, and it should, all, it should then allow you to download Office 2016 for free. Why would you want that? Well, one, it's going to let you do your work anything you want to do with 2016, whether it's to make birthday cards or what, whatever. But you won't rely on Citrix anymore to do your work. You'll be able to do it locally on your machine at home. Uh, you can do it with Citrix at home on your machine, but you're still you're communicating across the web and it's a little slower than something installed physically on your machine. And you'll have that application as long as you are active Southeastern Tech student. Now once you graduate, leave, uh, that's not going to say that it's going to poof magically disappear from your machine when you leave, but what will happen is once your account is no longer associated or active, if you go to update it or to re-download it, it's going to say your account's not active, you can't download it. It's not going to just take it off your machine if you already got it installed. It's just you won't get future, future updates and won't be able to re-download it as you go. I think it's five devices you can install this on. So you'll be able to download Microsoft Office and install it up to five devices. So that's going to be a benefit to you if you sometimes work at your, you know, if you work at home and maybe a friend's house or a parent's house or something like that, and you work on their computer so you can download it there as well. Um, Microsoft will have really good tutorials on their side on how to go through and download things and, um, and install it on your machine. There'll be two ways you can download it and install it. One will be a physical download and install, which means you would download it to your machine, install it to your machine, or run it from your machine. The other way would be cloud-based, where you're basically using it from the cloud or from the internet, kind of like you do Citrix now, except you'll be able to use it um, there. Um, 
and, and so that's going to be a major change for you guys. Your, the biggest change for you guys is your email is going to change. When we go to 365 and we get your email over to Exchange, how many of you use your phone to check your email? Or Southeast, you say, I mean, you actually got a program where in the email, I ain't saying go to the website on your phone, I'm saying you actually got it where it downloads to your phone, like your Gmail or something. Uh, if you do, you had to jump through some hoops to make that work. If you, if, you, if you figured it out, it wasn't real simple. You had to manually set up the server, manually put in all that stuff. Move forward, Microsoft's going to have a better way to um, do that. So you should be able to just put in your email address and it go out and it'll retrieve the settings, etc. Set so it's going to be a lot of benefits going forward. But I gave you a lot of information real quickly. Do I have any questions right now? Anything I've said, anything um, that I've talked about? Got any questions? None? Okay. Um, so as we move forward, your outmail will still be your student email until you're notified otherwise. Uh, so you will still go to al.southeasterntech or either through my ICC, however you want to go to it. And you will still access your email through that until we tell you otherwise. Once we make the change and we have your email up on the exchange, then we will give you a new way. We'll update the my STC to, to um, give you a new avenue to get to the um, new email system. And I'll let Brad and those guys know so they can get you the information. If you're eligible next week when we get all this turned on, it might not be. It might be in the next week before we get it turned on, or if we have to wait until I get all your the student email set up. I think we'll be good to go once we um, once we get migrated over. So uh, that's what I want to talk to you today. It's very short. I think it, was, it feels like about five minutes of talking. Yeah, about 10, 15, but, um, but it's, um, it's got a lot of information for you guys, but it's important information for you. So it wasn't a bad deal to have a short presentation to get lunch, free lunch, right? It's better than a long presentation for lunch, right? But anyway, um, your student email should be flowing out to your faculty. As we move forward, don't worry about the 0365 and the terminology you may hear people talking about until we tell you students are a go. Once we are go, you may have some questions, you can call me. Um, you, you can get my number um, from the secretary up front. You can call the front desk and say, hey, transfer to the IT director. <coughs> you can call me. Um, we'll tell you this, if you call me, I get about, my phone doesn't quit ringing. If you ever come to my office, it rings all the time. And if your ID does not come up, I will not answer that phone. Because I'll answer that phone says, congratulations, you have been selected to get a free subscription to Info Week, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Hang it up. You know, hey, we're such and such um, IT reseller out of Timbuktu. We want to come by and visit you. Hang the phone up. So, but what I do is if you leave a voicemail, it pops up on my computer, a voicemail. And I listen to that voicemail. And if it's a student who says, hey, I'm a student, I'm having some issues. If you leave me a callback number, I'll call you back. But if you don't, I try to tend to the issue, and I just hope you try it back again later to see if it's fixed or not. But so if you call me on my office phone, and I do not answer, leave a voicemail. Let me know you're a student. Let me know what you got going on, and then I will give you a call back. Now, it may not be instantaneous, because it may not be in my office. I may be out and about like I'm doing right now. So, But if you'll do that, I will get back in touch with you. Um, you know, as quickly as I can. So but don't just call, and if you get my voicemail, hang up. You can do that, that's fine. But if you want me to respond, and don't just say, hey, I have a problem, call me. Don't just say, hey, I'm a student, I have this problem, and you give me a call. Another tool that you could go, if you go, um, there's a, a tool called Team Viewer. I've done this, COL 1000, who's had me in your COL 1000 classes before? I've done a couple over here, not many. Do them over everybody pretty regular. Um, if you call me, I will point you to a website. There's a tool called TeamViewer. I'll have you install it. If you have problems with connecting to our stuff, especially the Citrix stuff, you go there and it won't let you load the stuff because the, all the plugins are not installed. But that's going to give me a remote control of your machine. But I don't have a remote control of your machine forever. It's, you have to give me numbers off of your machine. It's a one time connect. And I connect. Your screen turns black. That lets you know someone else is on it. When I'm done, when I exit, your wallpaper comes back and that lets you know I'm off of it. So it's, it's not. But, but if you call me, I'll call you back. I'm going to do that. And we may have to do some of that once we get this 365 and we have some issues with some things. But, um, but that's all I've got, Lancer. Did y'all have anything else?
So any other questions about anything now? If we're looking for anything IT related, any concerns, questions, problems? No problems? Come on. Paul, how about them saving files? If they're running from the cloud, where will they save their, their okay. work to? I'm glad you brought that up because I did forget that. Um, 365 is going to offer us some space in the cloud. How many has got a Dropbox? Not, not, not Blackboard, I'm just talking about Dropbox.com. You go there, you get a free Dropbox. Okay, that, that's a free thing and then you can pay to get more features and stuff like that. From my, from my sessions I've sat in, we're going to have some space out there. That may not be big, but there'll be some space out there that you can set up for, it's like a Dropbox, but it's through your account. And so, um, and I forget what Microsoft actually calls that. Dean, do you remember what they call that? Oh, it's called OneDrive. Yeah, OneDrive. OneDrive. <coughs> That's it. And, uh, and so you'll have some space to store your files out there. Now, if you're doing work where you're putting your stuff on your P drive, how many does that? Drop stuff on your P drive for your faculty, I mean, for your instructor to open up to grade or not. Uh, that, that's probably the most commonly used feature of Citrus because that gives you access off campus to your P drive on campus and be able to move files from your computer at home to the P drive. Now, that's kind of goofy the way you have to do it. It's not as, it's not as intuitive as you would think it is. So, but, and I can help you if you have problems with that. But that's the, that's the most commonly used feature of Citrix is being able to put your stuff from your home machine to your P drive. Now if you come on campus, you just, you just open up my computer and your P drive's right there. You stick your flash drive in and you copy stuff over. But with 365, there's supposed to be some space for all of you guys to have. Your mailboxes will be unlimited. Uh, how many gets junk mail in your iMail right now? How many gets a ton of junk mail in your iMail right now? If they ever get, if, if something off site ever gets your email address and they send to you an email address and they don't get a response, let me tell you how, how the junk mail gets started. You, a lot of times people say, well, what did you click on? What did you subscribe to? The way junk mail address list gets built is our third party ID is typically your first initial, last name, up to eight characters. Sometimes if we got two J Smiths or J Smith, it might be J Smith 1, J Smith 2, J Smith 3, and then when we get to 100, it'll be J 100, so it cuts it off. But once one of these robots or netbots, whatever, gets one of our email addresses and they see the format, and they'll start <coughs> A Smith at students.southeasterntest, southeastern tech, southeastern tech B Smith at students.southeasterntest, C Smith, and they'll just go to Alphabet. And then they'll come back A Smith 1, A Smith 2, A Smith 3, A S M I T 10, A S M I T 12. Because a computer can do that like that. And they'll send all of those emails out. Well, guess what? 99% of them is going to bounce. So that means that comes back to them and says, This does not exist. This email address is not valid. It's not a good email address. Guess what? The ones that don't bounce, that's the ones that they hold on to. They say, Something answered this account, something answered this email address. I'm going to put this in a list and I'm going to start sending stuff to you. And that's how you get on these uh, mailings. If you ever click unsubscribe or respond to, hey, don't send me this, then they know a human on the other end of that account is responding. Guess what? That goes to another special list. And that was definitely going to get a lot of emails sent to it. I've got, a, a, I've got a Hotmail account, maybe something else now, but I set up a Hotmail account. My first part of my Hotmail account is Viper. X C D I. That's never going to get hit by one of those things because it's something random I made up. Really and truly, I'll tell you, it happened when I was in college. How many of you know what a Dodge Viper is? The car. It first came out when I was in college. That was a long time ago. And I was, oh, that was a beautiful car to me. I wanted one so bad, but I couldn't afford a quarter of a million dollars and it cost to buy one back then. So, Viper, I used that for a lot of my sign on names and stuff. That was the first part of my sign on name. XCVI, what is that? That's the Roman numeral for 1991. So, 1991 Viper was very nice to me. So that's how I come up with that, Viper, 1991 at Hotmail.com. I hardly have ever gotten any junk mail to that account. It just don't come. My other personal account, remember I just said a Viper was a car I like? Well, I, you may not know it, but I was a wrencher, a mechanic. I pulled engines out of trucks, rebuilt them, put them back in, and I was a 
avid drag racer. I would go up to Twigs, I'd go down to Savannah. We street race. We'd go on Thursday nights, grudge nights. That's when everybody run. They might put money on the table for it. But we run what you wrong. It wasn't a class, you just go out there and run. And I had a truck that was pretty nice, and it got nicknamed Big Black. That was the name of my truck. Everybody, when I rolled up, you where's Big Black? Did you bring Big Black tonight? You run a Big Black tonight. My personal email account is Big Black at Gravewell.net. Black Black don't match no A Smith, B Smith, C Smith. I don't get many, um, I don't hardly get any junk mails in that email address either. So, but that's how your junk mail gets started, is they just see that. Now, 9100 numbers, if you, if, if that, if someone, if one person ever used 9100 over at stc-smail.com, and that got floated out there, guess what? They said 9100-00001, and they just started up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, ten. They got the 9100-99999 all the way across. And that would, at some point, that would get everybody here an email, a junk mail. So keep those in mind about that. Your junk mail, if your album gets so full of 6,000 messages, and I've seen some to six, I've seen some to 10,000 messages, unread messages, it won't let you in until we purge it. You have to call us, we'll purge it, it'll let you back in. I have one girl, got, she had 10,000 messages in her album account. We purged them. That afternoon, she had 6,000. Wow. That's how that's how hard her account was getting hit. So finally, we just created her one that was off the charts that nobody knew nothing about. This ain't the other one, just so she could do her work. But she was getting 6,000 a day in her account. It was getting locked out. So um, keep that in mind. And, um, and I'll just give one other tidbit since I do have a little time. Uh, passwords. How many in here use different passwords for every account that you use? Or you use the same password for everything. I've got a bunch of different passwords, but I will be honest with you, I'm probably more relaxed with my personal stuff than I am my work stuff. And I do have a standard password that I use for my personal stuff. It has a very few variations that, that don't work the first time. I'll try it with this variation, but I pretty much have a standard password. One of your most common in a college environment, because how many in here is an IT person? Either taking classes or IT or just some or just IT savvy, just know how to do stuff. Um, in a college environment, you'll have people who just nosy and they just like to see stuff. And um, a key logger is the most common way of getting passwords. Who, who knows what a key logger is? That's a thing. Somebody's software they can put on your on a machine. It's a thing they put in the USB drive behind the machine. You never see it, and it will log every keystroke that you put into a machine. And so. Later on, they'll get it and they'll just have a bunch of gibberish. I mean, a bunch of text, but they'll see an account and they'll see something behind it. Oh, I think that's a, a, a user account, but they'll see the web address you just typed in, mybank.com. <coughs> then they'll see something looks like a username, something looks like a password, and they'll go try it. That's called a key logger. Um, one way you can get by that is to have your passwords in a text file, not username and password, just a password, in a text file, highlight, copy it, and paste it in your password fields on web addresses. That way, a key logger don't intercept those keystrokes. It just sees you copy and paste something. They don't see the keystrokes. Passwords. How many of you can come up with a very complex password? Who's got your birth date as your password or password? What about banner? Who's got their birth date as their banner password? <laughs> There's a bunch of people who probably got their banner pass password set as their birth date. Who wants to know a good way to come up with a password that nobody will ever guess? And it will take um, brute force attackers millions of years to find it and something you could never forget. Find out whatever, a book, if, if you've got a favorite author, a favorite, I mean, if, you, if you're, if you're uh, spiritual, pick the Bible, pick your favorite verse out. Using the number for the verse, or you can do a book, you can use the page number for the book, use that number, and put the first initial of every letter in the first sentence or the first two sentences. And then copy that inspirational quote and put it in your wallet. Not the first initials, but just the inspirational quote. Somebody steals your wallet, they can say, oh, that's nice. They, they, they like uh, whoever. That's all, you know, they feel warm and fuzzy when they read this. That's not their own out of the way. But if you forget your password, you pull that sheet of paper out, you got the first initial of every of every word in that first paragraph or first sentence, first two sentences. Use the upper and lower cases as they are. Use the punctuation that's at the end of the sentence to give you that special character. And you can use the page number at the end. You can use the page number at the end. You've got a password that's very, very unique, very, very complex, very, very hard for any kind of system to crack, and you'll never forget it, and no one would ever be the wiser if they saw that in your wallet. 
because some of us actually put our passwords and put it in our wallet or put it in our purse or put it on our notepad. When I worked at Georgia Southern, I had a somebody left in that office. I don't even remember who it was or what it said, but it was some sort of phrase, some catchy little phrase. It was behind my monitor in my office when I worked at Georgia Southern. That was my password, the first initial of every letter of every word on that on that quote. And I used to quote it. Had to, it was actually in quotation. I used to quote quote at the end, first initial with the period at the end. And that was my password. And people, I'd be sitting there, I'm just, I'm just typing away. Sometimes I, I won't remember exactly when. Hey, remember that password? But it used to be all kind of up, you know. So I said, I'm just good like that. <laughs> yeah. But um, so that's just some tips for you guys. It's kind of help secure your stuff up. So um, be secure. Don't let people know your stuff. Don't be a clicker. Don't click on crap that comes to you. If you don't know who it is, don't click on. It. Ain't no bill collector gonna send you an email says, and ain't nobody gonna give you a million dollars by just by clicking on this email link. So don't worry about it. It ain't there. I didn't say, I think I sure could use that one for five million. If I just click on it, it ain't gonna happen. So don't worry about it. Don't click on it. You'll be fine. And um, any questions, give me a call. And so maybe I'll make your maybe I'll make your meal worth it now. I had the presentation to you. Your college foundations with Miss Thomas and